and I'm now joined by George Aratsis. George has made over 60 appearances for the Barkers senior men's team and has recently returned from injury. George, I'd like to talk about your glittering career, if I may. Um, 2022, the Barkers were formed in 1962. You will be way ahead of me here. That means it's our 60th anniversary. So I've been doing a bit of research in the club's history and uh, I came across the club's Wikipedia page. I'd like to just read out something that I found there and see what you make of it. So we're talking about season 2015 and the, the, the entry for the page goes as follows. Fortunes changed in the second half of the season with the inspirational signing of Georgia Ratzis from Knox City, sparking a 12 game unbeaten run leading to promotion to state one. Tell us about that glittering period of your career, George. It was a very um, glittering period of my career. I couldn't get a game in Knox Reserves in State 3 at the time. Um, yeah, it was getting, well, played as sweeper in the reserves and it was not what I thought was my position. So I had uh, Brett Tronconi, the you football know, legend, football legend um, yeah, in my ear trying to get me down here. Um, so eventually came down and uh, yeah, got, got thrown it right back in the seniors. Um, and yeah, we went on a very, very good run of 12, I think undefeated at the time and yeah, got promoted. So it was yeah probably one of the best footballing careers, oh, footballing um, moments of uh, my career and obviously really good for the club. And um, yeah, pretty much the last time I actually played football consistently without getting injuries. So yeah, that's why it was such a good year for me, I guess. It was a, it was a great period and I remember it well. But one thing I don't remember was two years later, uh, we're in state one, it's towards the end of the season, we're away to St Kilda. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't make that game, but I think what happens, we took an early lead, then Sean got an own goal and they got the winner. But I'm told that you got man of the match in that game. So what happened there? Yeah, again, it was um, against St Kilda at the time who was were doing really well in state one. Um, they had this guy that was... Um, I think he was straight out of like the Irish Premier League, like absolute gun and everyone's going, what a good player. And I've been telling Andy, our coach then, um, that I'm a centre midfielder, even though I really wasn't. But, uh, you know, and eventually after three years, so yeah, 215, 16, 17, yeah, three years, he finally got a chance to play me in the midfield. And um, yeah, had a had a pretty decent game. Um, I think he hit that Irish guy still in the back pocket. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was probably one of, uh, the very few good games that I actually played. So yeah, it's just one that sticks in the memory and I'll make sure that I'll let everyone know that it sticks in theirs as well. So and you you do know I was asked by a certain person to bring that game <laughs> up, don't you? Yeah, I could imagine who that yes, was, but yes, you can imagine. Yeah. But um and, and just finally, obviously you came back to the reserves last week. It wasn't the result we wanted, but how did you feel you adjusted to the pace of match play and looking forward as well to Sky. What do we need to do to improve to make sure we get the results? Yeah, um, in terms of getting back to playing football, it's been, yes, yeah, since 2019, round three, so it's over three years ago now, that was the last senior game that I played because of injury since then. Um, so yeah, the first 20 minutes on on um, last Saturday against Bumble was, yeah, just like, couldn't couldn't breathe or just struggling really bad and then um yeah eventually sort of grew into it a little bit and then went center back in the second half so but just i need a lot more game time and a lot more training and i need to lose a lot more weight but um yeah other than that it's uh just a lot of hard work that i've got to do and looking forward to to sky this week um as well for the seniors and the reserves um well from the reserve side of it just got to you know build on what we have a pretty decent start to the season with a couple of draws, which we should have been wins and stuff like that, but we've just got to, got to get a result now. So, um, yeah, and then from the senior side, we know what. Um, Sky's a very similar sort of club to us where they've had like a, a solid core of players that have been there through for years and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it'll be a really good game. And, um, I mean, yeah, credit to all the players and the seniors so far this year. We've had a really good start. Um, so yeah, just hope we just keep building on it and using that momentum to go forward, so yeah. Well, it's great to see you back on the park, George. Thanks for your Thank you. time and good luck on Thursday. We'll look forward to that. Thank you. Well, that's all for this edition of Barkers TV. But before we go, just a quick preview of what's coming up at the kennel. Thursday night, we have Sky United in men's reserves and seniors. That's reserves at 6.30, seniors at 8.30. So make sure you get down here to start your Easter weekend on the right foot. 
We got uh, a break for Easter, obviously, but then the following week, the big thing about the following week is that the women and the juniors kick off their seasons. Friday night, we've got the women at home, their first game of the season at home to Diamond Valley United. That's an 8.30 kickoff. Then the men, on paper, will have their biggest challenge of the season so far, away to Peninsula Strikers who've got a 100% record. And don't forget, you've got those junior sides beginning their seasons as well. So, great to have you along with us this evening. It would be even greater, even better to see you at the Kenwell on Thursday night. Meanwhile, go backers.